Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Test, 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 test. Hey guys. <coughs> hey, what's up, guys? So, I was talking to one of my patrons um, over the internet, and uh, it got me thinking about something that I hear a lot of people talk about. And so I just kind of wanted to rant a little bit. Not even rant, but just talk at length, I guess. Um, spoiler alert, a lot of my videos are scripted because I'm not confident with my words. Um, but I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. Um, and talking about my thoughts. So there's probably going to be a lot of ums and uhs. Hopefully I will be able to cut most of them out. We'll see. So, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that there's this really, people are mystified by the process of songwriting and um, musicality in general. And it seems like this very mysterious thing. And people don't know where to get started and they... They always use words like should, like, oh, I should work on it more, and I should do that. And uh, I like to use Victor Wooten's little trick, which is, you know, turn those statements into language statements or uh, language questions. So, like, ah, I should work on my grammar. I, I should work on writing out speeches. Maybe. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, a political speech writer, yeah, you should. Uh, if you're just going to have everyday conversations, that's not the way that it works. The, the way that you get good at having conversations is by having a lot of conversations. And if you do that enough, you can kind of step back and look at the theory behind how these exchanges work. And I feel like music is the same thing. If you want to get good at writing songs, write a bunch of them. And be willing to write some bad songs, uh, especially at first. Your songs aren't going to be very good, most likely. You might you know, have some beginner's luck or you might have some natural proclivities. But you're going you're gonna to learn by falling down because then, you know, like when a baby learns to walk, when they fall down... They're like, oh, there's the floor. Now I have a, a baseline. I have, I have something to kind of keep myself up against. If you don't fail, you're going to be kind of this amorphous blob. <clears throat> or you're going to be really fragile. You, you hear a lot of people who are really, really successful. They don't really fail, and then they fail big later on. And a lot of times they don't know how to recover. I remember reading a article by Will Smith when his um, movie After Earth came out and how hard it was for him that his the movie didn't do well and it wasn't critically well received because that was kind of in his mind one of his big first failures and uh, how important that was and um, so I feel like failure is something that I've dealt with a lot in my life and something that I still feel, uh, it's really hard, especially with music, being as old as I am, not that I'm ancient, but I'm, you know, I'm middle-aged, let's say, ooh, mysterious, um, but that I haven't accomplished more, and a lot of that has been self-imposed failure, and, uh, you know, like, n not giving more effort, that kind of thing. Um, but I think the thing that makes makes it a failure is, is not getting back up um, and trying again. So if you write a bad song, if you, if you get hung up on that song or that mistake, then, you know, that can be a failure in my mind. Um, and so the thing to do is to embrace failure. And this is advice that I need to take myself. I'm not good at this. I'm learning. Um, hence why I'm doing 
Patreon and these videos and, and that kind of stuff. It, it keeps me more accountable on one side. It's really exciting, too. I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Um, but I have to fail publicly. Not all my videos are going to work, and I'm okay with that at this point. Ten years ago, probably wouldn't have been. You know, everything would have had to be perfect before I could have done anything. But, you know, I'm better at embracing failure now. And so that's that's the thing, that's the takeaway um, from what I'm saying is, you know, you just have to do it a lot. And it's going to be, it's not flattering and it's kind of ugly. And that's where the magic is. Um, just like, you know, things decay in nature and, and you, you know, there's all these little squirrely bugs eating away at, let's say, a dead animal carcass. Um, but from that process, all this new life comes to be. And I feel like failing or doing something that's not great as an artist is kind of similar uh, in that way where those painful things that that stuff that's not fun or not flattering that's what's going to move you to the next level um so there's one more thing i want to talk about uh to do with that i need to grab i'm gonna grab a guitar that's shocking i know so i use this guitar to write out a lot of my musical ideas these days because it's easy it's accessible a lot of times my bass is in its gig bag or something and so i'll just you know kind of plunk out some chords record some things down on this but what i want to talk about is if you have something um, that you've learned from let's say a lesson with a teacher or you've you know watched a video on youtube and they're like Here's the five scales you need to know, or here's the, you know, you need to play these changes in jazz, or here's a, you know, altered dominant chord, or whatever it is, even if it's simple or complicated, you have to make it musical. You have to make it mean something to you. For instance, you know, a big mode that I like to write in is Dorian. That has a certain feeling associated to that scale for me. And so... Um, and so on and so forth. So... Um, instead of just running the scale, which can be good for your fingers if you're a player, but right now let's talk about songwriting. Um, you need to play around with that in a musical way. What, that, what I mean by that is feel something associated with these sounds. Don't just run your hands. Or don't just be like, well, the rules say this, so I've got to do this. Put the rules aside and just treat these as sounds. Treat it like a little a little kid would. Um, be open to it. So you know, if I'm trying to be like, I want to write something in Dorian, let's say. Okay, and it could be anything. I want to write something in minor. I want to you know write something with one chord. Okay, um, but I'm gonna say Dorian because I like Dorian a lot. So if I just run the scale, it's not going to sound very musical to people. But let's say that I start a rhythm on, I'm not going to change my chords, you know. Well, that starts to evoke some feelings. I'm playing with my dynamics, right? And to me, that feels like, okay, I'm going somewhere. This, these chords are moving somewhere. I'm, it's, it's taking me to a place. I may not know what that place is. But by that, you know, changing the chord up rhythmically, dynamically, whatever it is, that will get some reactions. So... Da, 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 
da, da, da, da, da. So I start to just sing something, but I'm not singing, I'm not focused on the notes, I'm focused on how it makes me feel. You know, and I can add in the defining note, if you will, of Dorian. Da, 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 da. So just by adding some, you know, playing around with some things, suddenly I'm like, ooh, what if I change the chord? So what if I go to another chord? Again, it doesn't matter what chord I'm going to specifically, okay? But I, I'm again, I'm hearing that motion. Da, 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 da. So absolutely, if you want to write songs, if you want to play music, you should. Um, and absolutely make it musical. Tie everything you learn to a feeling, to something internal, something that gets, gets you inspired or makes you sad or any kind of feeling. You know, that's music is super useful for that. And don't really worry about whether it's good or not or whether it's correct or not. That can come later. You can learn the grammar and, and add more tools to your toolbox later. Um, so I think that's a good place to stop my rant um, for now. So until next time, I'm Eric Blood, and may the groove be with you, always. Hey. Hey. Hey! Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me out a lot. Also, for information on my upcoming projects and access to early releases of my music and videos, please head over to my Patreon page. I've linked to it in the description below. Thanks guys! Cheers!